going to move on to our next guest, Ginger Zhang, who is one of our wonderful board members. Mm -hmm. So we really do feel lucky to not only have her on our board, but also have her as one of our OCA uh, mentors. And on top of that, just generally being wonderful at all times. <laughs> Ginger's here with uh, Haxter as well as Future Fabrics. And we're really excited to hear more about both. So take it away, Ginger. All right. You guys can hear me okay, right? Yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Awesome. So um, this is... Um, my name is Ginger, and thank you, Lee and Sid, for the introduction. I'm tuning in from uh, Chicago, um, United States, and uh, it's it's really great honor to be here and really happy to support the event. Um, you know, I've been, um, me, myself, as a maker, community enthusiast um, for, for forever. And so it's it's really really like deep to the bottom of my heart in terms of like supporting the global open hardware community um, and all the people that um, making technology more open, more accessible to everyone. So, hi. Um, so today, um, um, I actually, you know, like want to take some, take the time to, uh, one is to uh, talk about Hackster, you know, Hackster also part of like the open hardware community, um, what Hackster is about, you know, it's kind of like my day job. And then um, another fun one that I'm going to be chatting about is the, uh, 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 actually, you know, I think my slot is like perfectly after John's um, Fab 25 uh, presentation slot, because um, I, I'm also part of that community. Um, um, but I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, actually of two years of like research work around um, what we we'll call like future fabrics, which is a multi interdisciplinary makers and innovators, you know, that um, uh, uh, that leverages hacking making on all of these, you know, to um, but also to help with cultural preservation, especially specifically in um, in. Uh, kind of transition costumes and weaving that kind of uh, uh, that kind of like fabrics technique. Um, I'm actually gonna so I'll start with Hackster. Um, ah, okay, I don't have slides, but let me share my screen. I can share my screen, right? Okay. La la la. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, so. Um, Really quickly, uh, just you know, like as for as for Hackster, this is kind of my day role. Um, I'm I'm a campaign manager, program manager, community manager um, at Hackster. The the website really started back in I think 2014. Was founded by um, um, uh, Adam and Ben. You know, at the time in trying to promote and support people who are putting out open source hardware projects out there. Um, and after that, it kind of, I got acquired by a larger electronics distribution company called Avnet. Um, but still, the community states, uh, you know, like very vibrant. We have about, you know, 2 million um, users around the world um, um, that, you know, all the all the all the people, you know, like and there's like tutorials on Hackster, it's all open source um, and many uh, from beginner level all the way up until like FPGA, kind of like a super advanced professional level, all to support the uh, um, the community who's you know using on um, using internet platform, you know, and using social network to learn um, uh, to learn and share. And that's kind of like the essence of uh, Hackster.io. So you can always go to Hackster.io and. Um, a lot of the members probably heard of it. You know, they read Hackster News, which is the uh, news section of uh, all the um, um, different products that we cover. Um, you know, as more of like a media media source. You know, for the different new hardware that's coming out here. Um, and I do want to mention. You know, part of the reason why I bring um why I bring um, um you know Hackster. You know, also on board is that we have uh, uh, we have the open hardware. Um, certif uh, uh, roundup uh, each month um, that Sid um, curates, and then we also write that as the uh, you know part of our news um, to promote in the larger uh, uh, larger um, global audience. Um, so you can see if you go onto the news page, or sometimes you also this will bump into your Google News. Um, anything that 
from academic kind of like research. If you're like electronic enthusiast, there's lots of content, you know, all around. Um, uh, you know, we have like full time uh, just writers that uh, write for Hackster News um, and also monthly certificate roundup. So if you do have a, um, um, a certificate, you know, like, prob you know, please pinch it if you want to be featured in that month's roundup. And, you know, we, we are always looking for, um, um, for new content. And also, since the platform is actually free to any member that signs up, all you have to do is sign up. Um, how it's organized is that there are different platforms. So the different platforms are, um, Kind of different companies and then we also have this kind of like community hub so under the community hub whether you are a school so we have like we can go to ashwa's we can go to ashwa's page and you'll see there's this uh, kind of what we call community hub um as a way for nonprofit for act for schools you know for student clubs uh to utilize this um to utilize this community interaction resource you can if you're most 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 of them if you have like a web page great but think of this kind of as a add-on you can also try to uh, use this to promote certain um content um so like the ashra page is a, a prime example right you know of like okay it's it's another way for you to get to know the different initiatives um of the organization um so yeah so there's ashra and then you'll see um a lot of like different uh like make fashion make fashion is another um another community um i think some people are really familiar with so you could link it to all your external um external web external like tutorial or links um and then create these really easy um blocks, you know, and projects. And a lot of these are all different uh, user submitted projects, right? You know, so it doesn't need a lot of curation, a lot of like, there's like no coding at all when you get to the back end to build out a little community hub for you, for your for yourself. And we've seen um, many, many companies, communities all use this. So if you're familiar with Seed Studio, like Seed Studio's um, community hub is actually probably more elaborate. Um, like they'll use it to do their own product promotion. Um, and it's uh, each of the um, sections is also organized and ca characterized, um, classified, um, depending on whatever that whatever that product they are, uh, they are promoting. Um, and so, 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 yeah, like these are all very, very cool, diverse, um, different kind of projects you can totally reference to. So we can maybe go into one and you'll be able to see it's really, it's, it's really easy, easily laid out um, with the kind of like a story structure and you'll be able to um, kind of put down the things that you used in the project. And the cool thing is like it's dynamically linked. So you only have to write your project once, publish it here. And with the hardware, let's say this Seed Studio ESP um, product, if you click on it, it will actually take you to that product itself and, and all the other reference projects around that product. So a lot of companies are a lot of like startups, you know, like really like this dynamic linking feature um, because it's like low maintenance, just as long as any kind of user link your product, like you, you, you actually get to e discover, um, you know, the, the, the world, you know, like the, the users uh, that that's using your product and how they're using it. Um, uh, much easier instead of like a, a full, um, Full on, you know, sometimes a lot of like the marketing people, you know, have to go on curate. Um, you can write your own projects. You know, there's ways for people to put in their reference uh, files for their designs, for their code. Um, and 
some of the coolest part, you know, of course, is this, um, like the, the part that I operate specifically, which is the contest that's on Hackster. So we do a lot of these campaigns. We get um, sponsors, you know, from like a bigger companies um, where they, um, they will host a contest. Let's say this one's, you know, around AI, um, uh, Seed Studio, you know, I can show some other ones uh like open cv that's a really cool one um there's like a make fashion one uh this built together i believe they presented earlier today um which was a also a collaboration between us and eth zurich one of the phd from eth zurich um he wanted to use an online platform to really create a mechanism for technologists to connect with the disabled community to co-create via the kind of online environment um for meaningful projects that's also have this have had like feedbacks you know from real disabled people um usually you know like with without without this kind of um uh, platform or environment usually in a traditional product development environment it's very it's very slow and it's very expensive for to get um feedbacks uh, by by kind of uh leveraging this open hardware open source um um, um mechanism you know and the it's it it has it's kind of proven to be like a really great way um for us to um get innovative prototypes out there ideas out there um so super excited for for this contest and we actually run on we ran two of this already and there will be another one coming up soon so um yeah, please join Hackster, and um, there will be many of these opportunities to come. And of course, uh, any hardware that you end up creating and want to certify, uh, get certified. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, so lots of opportunities, you know, like via these um, via these contests. You know, we're super um, happy to always, you know, host these. Um, and we. We might have some also coming up in collaboration with Oshawa um, um, that also stay, stay in tune. Um, yeah, so a place for people to really, you know, on a global scale to, um, to learn, to share, um, like for people to, to publish their project. It, it's so, it's super easy. You literally just go in there, you create project, um, 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 fill out a couple of like like form stuff, and I'll show maybe a couple of like my projects over here. Um, um, so uh, again, you know, for people who are creators, this is a really um, easy way. Oh, there was actually my um, my project from from Kinky Makers. Uh, sorry, let me see where was it again. So this, I, I saw some comments about the uh, paddle project. So this was actually my whole, um, uh, like write up on this whole, um, on you know, like that workshop and you know how things were put together and eventually you know some of the some some of the some of the things I um, used kind of as a little document in terms of uh, that um, workshop. It's super fun. Yeah, I had a really great time in you know soldering things, you know, putting together the paddle and learn about the electron electronic side of things um, in that from from that workshop. So please check it out. So. So this is kind of like my project. Um, the so let me see how much time I have. Um, I I'm gonna so so that's kind of like the hackster part. Um, besides besides hackster, um, and it's um, um, I will switch. You know, I I I'd love to talk about you know the future fabrics on um, project because it's it's again i think um it's another type of innovation activity that i'm super like personally like uh passionate about um and it has uh, it, it it changed my whole actually world view around on um, i think hacking and making 
and co-creating with uh, with community. Um, and it's uh, it, it's something that I, I don't think has shared a lot outside of the uh, um, the fab uh, the fab ecosystem or fab fab world yet. So I'm super happy to use this um, uh, and to be able to use this opportunity to do some of that. Um, so uh, if if you're you know like part of like the live stream that saw Jan's um, presentation earlier uh, for the Czech Republic upcoming conference, um, you'll see that it's it's a annual conference that um, usually happens in the summer um, with the Global Fab Lab um, network. And for any of like makerspace um, operator owner and um, uh, uh, hackerspace on. Um, uh, uh, people out there, you know, or like we are part of like the member, um, you know, there's, that's a, that's a, that's also a, a great, um, network. You can put yourself, uh, your makerspace in the fablab.io, um, you know, to, to get in, to, to get on like a world map of, you know, and then, so when, when people within that network, when they go to a city, they want to find like a makerspace, you know, a hackerspace, you know, you can be um, on that map. And so, so every year, you know, all of the people that are, that's in that network kind of get together. And, um, but in recent years, what we, what the, what, what has always been super interesting is these kind of innovation challenges that's um, on the ground. The first one was in um, Bali, the first one was in Bali, and then there was um, um, uh, kind of like five different social um, social challenge, you know, was posed to this international community. Um, and uh, uh, one was around energy, one was around mass tourism, um, and all of these kind of social economical problem. And then what the what the, what, what happens is that there's like a 10 day um sprint happens before the festival, the, the conference itself, where everybody joins in this kind of hackathon journey um, and, and the international makers actually get to meet and co-create something, rapid prototype, um, leverage actually all the rapid prototyping to, to create a solution, a community solution for for the community. And um, so the last one, you know, I'll, I'll probably like go go backwards because this one's like mostly fresh on um, the Future Fabrics one in uh, Mexico this year. So, um, and the, um, and usually you we also have to, to really analyze the problem a, a lot too. Like usually it's like, is it really a problem? Um, and my my personal take on this kind of like um, exercise, especially when it's working with people who, who are usually like not the people you normally um, work with in a very international and multidisciplinary group. And it's, um, um, imprompt kind of like formed you know as a team um it's a super rewarding and fulfilling um experience in putting all your soft skills and hard skills to test you know like uh, you could be like sometimes like you could be like a very strong um maker but you know uh, are you able to really contribute to, you know, like a larger team and the larger mission. And it's, it's, it's a super fun experience. So i um, part of like what, what, um, what started, you know, like our whole process in this one was that um, the, to tackle the kind of topic of cultural preservation. And this is, um, it exists in places, you know, that's on um, whether it's, you know, being had like a really rough history of being colonized, you know, or like the, the, the region itself, you know, they, they, they are, they are losing like the younger generation to take interest in their own culture. Um, a lot of money comes from uh, those kind of like social aspirations, you know, and then, you know, like what, what we bring in is, you know, we really, you know, actually going to the um, um, the community. Uh, so this this is this kind of like already um, as a result. I show here as a uh, web page, which is also, you know, actually built, you know, within that ten day hackathon period. Um, my um, and 
we would come in um, to to so so this specifically one we were in the region of like the uh, uh, Yucatan and Yucatan in the old days you know there's a lot of like Mayan culture over there and a lot of uh, the women over there are still using very traditional um, weaving techniques you know to create these kind of uh, crafts and as part of like their um, um, uh, their their to support their everyday living. Right, you know, and their families and stuff. Um, so, like, where where does innovation, you know, like coming to this type of uh, in type of this project, right? You know, and what what is actually useful for them that they will actually continue to be using? Uh, and those were always kind of like what we when we when we go in and um, you know work as like a a, a research group when we um, we we look at so kind of like a cool thing what we did. So okay, they don't they they don't have like a, a map, you know, they don't understand like their ecosystem so we we actually you know spend a lot of time in um creating like a whole um um map you know like a community map um for for their different you know where different processes you know taking place um just also so for like uh make make this open and public so that when other people are trying to interact with this world with this ecosystem they have somewhere to you um to be to start with we also collected you know like these stories from like the community elderly to really help them tell um their story tell them where they come from how they live um and why this kind of craft is um is uh, uh, um, is important to them and what they think of their own culture heritage. Um, I was part of like the, the make group, which was super fun, um, but also very challenging. And uh, the, the 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 thing that we're tackling is that actually the tooling they have, you know, in terms of um, um, doing this kind of backstrap uh, loom on um, technique uh, is that they sometimes they will um, have broken pieces. They will have um, they will have um, non-functional pieces. You know, like and they have um, no way of like reproducing those tools. There's there's nowhere right. You know, that's also online. Like selling this kind of as a kit. Um, so we actually um, went in and um, kind of created based on their traditional um, ways and create this like this like three uh, D print and created this like. 3D models, you know, but and then we, 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 we the, the whole process is actually the more interesting part that we had our own like first assumption, how it should be made and where it could be like more beneficial and in, um, in, uh, uh, innovative. Um, and then we, uh, for the next five days, we every day we will be working in the Fab Lab, you know, for one day. And then the next day we go to um, go to the community and where you saw like those women, you know, have like the interviews, um, interact with them, get their opinions and feedback, you know, on if that is useful and have them try it out um, and eventually, you know, create this uh, this educational kid uh, where we um um bring it to the children bring it to the younger generation because again right you know it, the, the the problem is that you know the younger generation is not interested in this this craft um and then um and then using that actually as a opportunity to introduce history to introduce kind of like the anthropology side of the culture um as like alongside digital fabrication alongside open source using um, um, some like use, using um, uh, uh, digital, you know, our modern techniques to, um, uh, to, to, to help, to help, you know, like their, their region to help with their cultural identities, um, um, continuation, you know, of that, of that type of, um, 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 uh, tooling so so yeah that was um that was actually a lot of um a lot of effort you know in, in terms of um in terms of just interacting you know with a with a with a normal community that's outside of like the hacker hacker and maker world in trying to get them to 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 use some these these principles and make this totally open um there's another group that was actually doing the natural dyeing um things you know so part of like what what they were what they were 
what they created, you know, is these um, these fibers. And then we went into like into a lot in terms of, you know, even how the fiber is like extracted, um, how they're like, how they're, what's their current dyeing techniques and what are the local, um, what are the, what are some of like the local um, plants uh, um, that they're able to get access to, to create new color, to create um, new, new, um, New, new palette um, and create like this whole kind of like reference booklet so they could um, again use in um, in terms of like uh, bringing their dye like their 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 dye techniques to a um, to, uh, to 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 a new level so um, maybe I think this was this is this is actually one of the you you can see um in this video itself, you know, just how very much, um, you know, not only is, a lot of the process is still very uh, hand-based, um, but there's so much wisdom in in these in these processes. Um, and this is actually my one of the full one. This is how they currently do do um, natural dye. And then they create these kind of like weave baskets. Um, this this was part of the process. You know, we actually went into a jungle to visit um, the fiber makers. You know, where they they literally you know they're taking the plant. You know, and how um, how to process those plant um, uh, into fibers um, and understand like everything from um, uh, from from raw to you know like an end product type of like process. So so that was ha that happened this year um, in Mexico. Um, the the one that was done in Bhutan. Am I still okay on time? Okay, I uh, I'll keep going. I I just have like one more thing to show. You know which is the, um, which was uh, which is this Bhutan one. That was also very so cool. Um, so this happened like in Bhutan. It's the same kind of like research group. There's uh, um, on you know in and out like sometimes like different 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 people. So it's always a little bit more. Um, uh, uh, it's pretty fluid in terms of like team composition. But the, always you know like the the goal is to you know how can we weave technology into transition. Um, uh, for the for the pun of it, this one um, happened in in Bhutan and actually won uh, one of the um, um, prize, you know, for like what they call it the Fab City Challenge. Uh, and again, there was a, a couple like different people could work on different um, aspects mm -hmm. of the of the project. There's um, actually also a lot of like just pattern, right? You know, in times in terms of digitizing. The patterns, you know, that has symbolic um, um, and artistic meaning um, behind whether it's a tribe, whether it's, you know, that um, ethnic, ethnic group, um, you know, like those are also all very meaningful to document it um, um, for the continuation, you know, of the education, um, as well as, you know, like sharing with the world. So um, the so so you see like this is this is kind of like a cool map that you know was was made because in Bhutan even it is like super dinky little um I shouldn't say dinky very small um um a country you know that's in the Himalayas and it's not super accessible um but you can see the kind of cultural diversity from the patterns, you know, from their fabric uh, that's, you know, very specific to the different region. Um, um, and so what we, what, what was part of the project that was super cool is that there was this, again, you know, a education kit that was created. Um, so to, for, for easy, to easily, um, um, get people to understand just basic uh, weaving. Um, and what I really love about uh, this project itself, let me see if I can do the booklet right here. Um, so it's like a, a friendship bracelet 
uh, right? You know, and for like five to eight years old, and then they get this kid, and you know, all of these were actually using the Fab Lab uh, that was in Timpu, you know, to create everything all the way from um, the box, um, you know, and everything because again. Bhutan is a very inaccessible place. You can't just, it's not like in US or Canada or Europe, you put a credit card and then things just show up in your door. There's like nothing that's produced um, for 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 this kind of like purpose at all. So we were we were able to to go in and to use like five days uh, kind of time span to to come up with this and produce this locally. Um, and uh, since I'm more like on the electronics side, I was very excited that, you know, it's once you get that, get past that the weaving aspect there was also an exciting opportunity to introduce uh electronics and wearable fashion um as a way for to engage uh the the, the students you know with with just very basic stem principles right you know like oh you know to decorate your friendship bracelet you can now add an led and now you know let's play with some sensors um and it's so it's it's to to, to me um it's it's super meaningful um in like even very small kind of blinky projects right you know but you know taking it out of like the a breadboard um getting started tutorial you know by just some like very basic principal ones but that's very connected also to like a local culture like a local um identity um um uh, um so that we can you know also bring that as part of the conversation rather than you know like all we do is like math and physics um you know like so they could they could also you know think on the higher level, right? You know, how as in the future, if I become, you know, a innovator or technologist, you know, is there a way I can contribute back to um, my, to the locally, you know, um, um, <clears throat> and um, help others, you know, all these kind of like social empathy that's built into uh, um, these projects. So, so yeah, um, that's basically um, my presentation and, uh, I'd love to see if there's anyone or, you know, if Lee and Sid can want to chat with me here. Uh, any questions that you have? That's kind of the gist of uh, what I want to present today. Oh, oh, we're, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger, that was incredible. Uh, I am a huge fan of weaving. That is one of my favorite things mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And so getting to see all of these ways that uh, folks were learning and exploring weaving in different cultures and in different practices was just incredible. Thank you for sharing all this. <laughs> we also love our Hackster page. We use our Hackster yes. page frequently. I, I update that thing pretty regularly. So um, <laughs> if you are a frequent Hackster.io user, go follow us there. I'll even pull that up. Um, yeah. 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 And we have been um, really seeing a lot of people engaging with textiles a lot more generally throughout the open source movement in the last few years. So this is like a few examples of, uh, of the many like textile oriented projects. So it's really, really awesome to see, to see them and to see you involved in so many different things. Um, so thank you so much, Ginger. If people want to know a little bit more about any of the projects you talked about, uh, where can they find more information? Um, Hackster, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or you know, like feel free to reach out to me. Uh, the 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 weaving projects they are, um, I think on Fabric Academy site. So I'm mm, okay. Link here. Um, let me share a link here. Oops, how do I comment? Ah, yeah. Do, if you drop if you us the link it, anywhere, yeah. we'll get it. We'll we get, get it to it the people. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. Okay, can you can you see it, Sid? Yep. Yeah, we got, got it. it. Chat. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think you know one link is fine, and then you can navigate yourself, you know, to other parts of like the interwebs. Um. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited. You know, I'm I I have um um I really uh from from me personally, I love um to see. Again, you know, like, of course, certify your open hardware project, you know, mm -hmm. public and available so that it's, 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 you're, you're, it's 
amazing and sometimes the most impact is when I'm when I see like in some parts of the world you've never heard of Mm -hmm. right you know that or you just don't have access or have like usually like a normal knowledge because they're not famous and they take a um open design and to create it locally and then they will be able to you know impact their own local community those are always super amazing for me so i'm really a big um uh, oh there's a fax coming Oh, there's we've got some facts. We've got we've got a couple. We got some faxes coming in. <laughs> yes. You guys um, want to make it? Oh, it takes a minute. It takes a minute. Okay, okay, okay. We did receive uh, a pretty we did good fax. A word search, but yep. I did not receive the key. I don't know what words I'm supposed to be searching. So I'm just gonna start circling things. I think yeah. that are words. Um, we'll update you folks on the progress when I figure out what the words are. <laughs> uh, and we also received uh, an epic fax. I, very... I, I think it'll be easiest if I come a little closer for this fax. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess this is a fax that we now know is called Endless Horse. So we start up here with this the horse and his legs. I had to oh, take wow. Seven pages. Seven pages of horse. And I will say, once we get to the seven page, no hooves. Yeah. Curious. Wow. I guess wow. the horse really is hen endless. Yep. So thank you to whoever sent us endless the endless horse. horse. And uh, well, we're getting a fax right now, but we will have a look at it after our next guest. Um, thank you so much, Ginger, and we will speak with you soon. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Ginger.